80 proof and, and, and was just always, always measurable. And, our, and our basic drinks were the whiskey sour, the daiquiri, the Negroni, and the Manhattan. Those are the ones we basically tested with. Right. And um, that's when we sort of brought in people and we would have like a minimally shaken drink, we would have a liquid nitrogen chilled drink, um, a stirred drink, and, and what's nice to know is that kind of the general sort of paradigms are correct, that we kind of, at least among sort of experienced drinking palates, we do like the drinks that we think we're supposed to like stirred, we kind of do. And the drinks we think we like um, shaken seem much better. And that might just be us being used to it. And, and those weren't tasted just blind, blind folded. Like blind folded, you couldn't even see the drink. Uh, which test do you guys want us to run, by the way, since we probably only have time to run one live? Which one do you, which one? Um, yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, a question. Um, with a, a liquid, let's say a sugar content liquid, well, well, when you're shaking a cocktail, you're airing it. Does it make a difference if you shake or stir a cocktail if it has a liquid that has a sugar content by integrating it better? Uh, integration, no. Aeration, yes. I don't think, like, if you properly stir a drink, like, you're not going to have any sugar syrup left at the bottom, and you're also, if you probably stir it rather, and you're not going to see a lot of swirly doodles, which to me indicate, when you look through, there's a difference in refractive index, which means that it's passing through something with a different refractive index, i.e., crap ain't mixed yet. Um, but when you, but it's going to definitely hold air differently. So if you run a test, and we didn't talk about this, and I didn't post it on the blog because I didn't do enough experiments, but I did a test where I shook, um, I shook a drink that instead of containing lime juice, contained only the acids present in lime. And it, hold, it held air a lot worse than uh, real lime juice did. And this is, uh, if, how many of you have carbonated out there? How many of you guys carbonate? Go, go buy a carbonation rig, Jesus. Anyway, the uh, carbonation will tell you if you carbonate a drink with real lime juice in it, it foams like a, like a lunatic and starts spraying out of your, out of your carbonation rig. If you use lime acid or clarified lime juice, it doesn't. So I think that there definitely is some stuff in uh, lemon and lime and all of those juices that we use that helps hold air better and therefore makes the drink hold its bubbles better, thereby reinforcing our, our like to shake them. And maybe that's part of the reason why we do it with citrus. Who knows? I mean, there are some drinks we, that we serve with citrus that aren't shaken. You know, For instance, uh, you don't shake uh, a gin and tonic and yet you squeeze the lime over it. At least I do. You know what I mean? The rapid rate of it cooling the drink, does it affect the actual taste outcome? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, dry ice especially. Dry ice is CO2, carbon dioxide. So you're going to minimally carbonate your drink. If you want a drink that's like a little bit pétillant, right, you want a little bit of bubbles in it, dry ice is great. You know what I mean? If you don't want that little prickly sensation, then I wouldn't use dry ice because it's going to change the taste perception. Liquid nitrogen doesn't change the perception of the drink in the same way, but it does aerate it uh, slightly. So if, you, if, you, if you're taking a stirred drink with liquid nitrogen, it's going to move, move it a little more te texturally uh, on the side of a shaken drink, uh, and also you have a tendency to over chill liquid nitrogen drinks, which it just throws everything out of whack. Now, if you're but but if you're if you're if I was going to serve all of you guys liquid nitrogen drinks, I would over chill them all, put them on trays, have them all done, and then send the runners out as soon as they got right, and then all of you would have a perfect cocktail, which is very difficult to do in a large situation. So you can use it kind of both ways. My my general concern with 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 when people sort of use liquid nitrogen or dry ice to chill drinks without thinking about it, um, is that when we're making drinks for novices or people who are not like us, who have livers of steel, um, that you end up chilling the drink um, below without dilution, um, and so, but you're also chilling the drink beyond the perception of alcohol, and so these drinks end up really sneaking up on people. And the, and the fine art of pre-diluting a, a pre-batch is something that I don't think is addressed enough. I think it's much more difficult to dilute and to make a good pre-batch than most people talk about. I think it's not, it's not something you hear a lot of people talk about because they don't want to talk about pre-batching because we're all about fresh stuff anyway, but it's, it's freaking hard to do a good pre-batch and have it come out the way you want, right? How many of you guys have made a pre-batch for a big thing and it wasn't like what you, what you wanted it to be? All of you. I have. You know what I mean? Um, wait, we have time for one, one, would you guys want to see shake versus stir or do you want to see the ice drop and they both go together? I don't care. Shake versus stir. Shake, stir? Shake versus stir. Shake versus stir. Right. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to use that. Um, shake. Shake with that guy. Okay. Crazy monkey. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go normal. It's going to go normal on it. Okay. Crazy monkey. Oh, Jesus. Shake versus stir. Shake versus stir. Put some in your stir. You got a spoon? Here, let's move it here. Let's go from one to the other. 
Sorry, my glass is broken. I don't know what these things were here for because uh, everything would be closed. You ready? Whoa. Yep. Yeah. Go. Wait, crazy. that my temperature had plateaued somewhat, even though I was going like a lunatic. And that's because I'm not putting that much extra energy into it and my drink has reached equilibrium. Here. And it's rising because it's not on the thermal Jesus. Okay. Look up, uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Anywho. See, I'm still, even, I'm still even getting there. I mean, I know I'm doing a slow stir, but that's because of my lousy posture. Yes, remember, stirring is more difficult than you think. I thought stirring was the easy one. Stirring is the hard one. Who knew? Especially when you serve in this glass. Anyway, it, it's, uh, it's a real uh, treat to share this stuff with you because um, we've had uh, a lot of fun doing this and I hope that the way we work together on stage communicates some of that stuff. Yeah, thanks for inviting us to Berlin. I've never been. I love it. It's great. I, I, I'll just close the guy. Um, my great-grandfather was a, uh, a research scientist um, at Humboldt University and uh, you know, did very early work with um, uh, glaucoma and I have no idea what the hell he would be thinking if uh, his great-grandson was uh, lecturing about the science of cocktails. <laughs> Dave and Evan. It was really interesting and it was scientific, really, <laughs> and uh, surprising for somebody, I think so. So, um, yeah, I hope that is there any uh, book project uh, which is coming up uh, with you or something like this? You told me, or oh, you have a book for Cocktail Primer, uh, which came out uh, last year as uh, for beginners, for home bartenders, uh, but uh, there actually are a chapter or two which I would have uh, rewritten. Okay, sounds interesting. Thank you. And um, okay, you clear a little bit up. <laughs>